Hello Saints, peace, love, grace in Christ Jesus be with all of you out there. You know, over the past year, the thought of whether or not to make this video has been nagging me over and over and over again, and I've put it off long enough. I put it off to make all the other videos on my channel, but now it's time and I can't put this nagging feeling away, I can't get rid of it, and I've had dream after dream over this issue, and you know, let's, let's not... Uh, when I say dream after dream, I mean normal dreams, okay? I'm not talking about prophetic dreams by any means. I'm talking about the normal dreams we all have. I'm talking more like nightmares, to be honest. And it's obvious to me that I'm being prompted to make this video for a reason. There's no doubt about it. So, in obeying what I believe to be the promptings of the Holy Spirit, I shall expose the enemy's game plan to pervert, corrupt, hide, twist, change, remove... All these evil attempts. Again, even in this day and age, we're hearing the words, Truly hath God said. The enemy said that 6,000, over 6,000 years ago, when he came to Eve and he said, Truly hath God said, and we're hearing the same words today. And now we can see their plan. They're caught red-handed, and here's the proof in the video. I've mentioned in just about every one of my videos just how important it is to use the King James Version Bible only. To overcome all the excuses out there why you're not using the King James and have surrendered to these other versions or perversions as I like to call them. The number one excuse I hear and I used to use this excuse too when I was younger is that the King James Version is just too hard to understand. It's too hard to read the old style English, the thou's and the these and so on. And when I first got saved, I was very young. And at the time, I had three or four different versions to read from. And there's no doubt about it, the newer versions were much easier to read, for me anyway. And when I when I got a hold of the King James, it was as if I, I was reading Chinese. And it might as well have been Chinese because I just couldn't understand what it was saying. I was concentrating more on understanding the words than I was on understanding the sentences never mind the paragraph and what it meant you know growing up in a home where both the French and English language is used frequently I understood one thing if you suddenly stop speaking one language over time you're gonna you're gonna lose the ability to speak that language in other words if you don't use it you're gonna lose it and in this case it's the same thing so Applying that to the King James Bible, you know, I knew enough, was smart enough to understand that if I didn't learn how to read the Old English and continue to use it, I'd never understand it. And eventually, I'd get to the point where I'd have to start all over again, all the way back to the beginning, and learn how to read it all over again, just like learning how to uh, understand and speak French, or English, or Spanish, or whatever. So what I'm trying to say, it is possible to learn the Old English. It is possible to get so familiar with it that it no longer seems like the Old English anymore. You're going to teach your brain how to read it and understand it, just like you do with languages that you speak and read now. It is possible. But there is a catch. Once you learn how to read it and understand it, you have to keep using it. Don't go back to the old habits of taking the easy way out keep at it stay with it and you're gonna learn to love it just like I do today what I did to get used to the old English was I'd read the, the King James and then I'd read the new version comparing each sentence with sentence and over time I became less and less dependent on the newer version I got to the point where all I was using was the King James and I stuck with it in short you know there's times when I might get confused over a, a word or a phrase in the King James and I'll turn to the new version to get a better idea of what the word means or what the sentence is trying to say. But before you do that, instead of doing that, try going to the Bible dictionaries instead. The King James Version Bible dictionaries. And look up those words. That's all part of 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved, right? Okay, now getting down to the nitty gritty. Today, we're going to compare the King James Version Bible to the most popular version out there, the New International Version, or Perversion. Friends, let me tell you, 
if you haven't investigated this information before, you're going to be shocked at what you're about to learn and see on this video. I mean, really shocked. I'm going to show you things that are absolutely blasphemy. A clear indication that the enemy is perverting God's word and it's all part of the plan. The plan, the New World Order plan to change the Bible into what they want the Bible to say from what God says in the Bible. See, they want to change his words. Now, there's a documentary out there called The New Order of Barbarians. And I'm going to leave the link in the description box. You're going to have to click on the area where it says show more. It's going to open up the entire description box and just look through it. And you're going to see the title called New Order of the Barbarians. And I want you to go to that video, okay, before you continue with this one, this video. I want you to go to that video. And I want you to go to minute 42, okay? 42 minutes into the video. And I want you to listen to what he says at this point, okay? And it outlines the plans of the enemy for today and into our future and it even goes back a couple decades of what they've been doing this whole time and they've been hiding this from the public's eyes but go ahead and listen to it the name again is new order of barbarians new order of the barbarians go to minute mark 42 and listen to it for just three or four minutes okay now this isn't a joke folks listen and understand the evil one's plans for the Bible and once you listen to that video it's going to be clear why the newer versions of the Bible are being put in place out there right now they tell you point blank their plans to change the words in the Bible and why they're doing it now after you hear that part in the video I highly suggest you watch the entire video later on okay it's extremely disturbing it's eye-opening but I believe it's something every person in the body of Christ should be aware of the things happening now so you can protect yourself and the game plan that began decades ago all leading up to the Antichrist and his evil system okay and it's all gonna be in place for the 70th week of Daniel so please take the time to watch the video okay now let's get to the meat and potatoes of this video we're going to go through verses in the King James, and I'm going to show you the same verses in the New International Version, NIV, and we're going to compare the two. And in doing so, you're going to see how the enemy's changing God's word, how he's perverting it, diluting it, and in many cases, completely removing it, completely erasing entire sentences in the King James, uh, from the King James, and they're removing those verses from the New International Version, NIV. And this is all done to hide something, okay? So when we find something the enemy wants to hide, that's a huge clue that it's something important, okay? It must be important. The enemy hides things that reveal things, okay? Things that reveal the enemy's true nature, his game plan, if you will. And undoubtedly, we need to pay close attention to the scripture that they delete from the NIV. Or they leave out in the NIV. They're deleting verses from the King James Version. And they're not putting him in the New Version. Alright. So beginning our first verses to compare the King James verse. 1 John 4.3 And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist. Now the NIV. 1 John 4 3 but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God this is the spirit of the Antichrist now since the spirit of the NIV doesn't confess in this verse that Christ is come in the flesh it must be the spirit of the Antichrist Philippians 2 6 the King James who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God NIV who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped you see the difference there the NIV contradicts John 10:30. I and my father are one look back at Philippians 2 6 
who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. In the perverted version, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. You see how different those verses are? Completely two meanings. Again, it's a clear attempt at removing Jesus from the Trinity, trying to remove Jesus from the Father, trying to put space in between Jesus and the Father, making Jesus unequal to the Father. This leans heavily towards the false religions out there of Mormonism and Jehovah's Witnesses and all the others who say that Jesus is a created being and didn't always exist. If you watched my last video, uh, the two videos, part one and two, is, is Jesus God, you know and you've learned from watching those videos that Jesus was not created. He existed always. He's always existed. He was in the Old Testament. He's the one that talked to Adam in the garden. He's the one that talked to Moses. In Matthew 9.13, the King James, For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. NIV, For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. You see here, the NIV deletes the purpose behind calling sinners. We see this again in Mark, in Mark 2.17. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. In the NIV, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Again in John, John 6, 47, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. He who believes has everlasting life. You see the difference? The first one says, you must believe on him. And the perverted version says, you just have to believe. It doesn't care who you believe on. You just got to believe. Has everlasting life. Believe in what? Believe in what? Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. The NIV. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city well according to this it seems we don't have to obey god's commandments anymore all you have to do is wash your robes now understand i know most of you out there understand right division and you know revelation 22 14 is talking about the nation of israel all throughout daniel's 70th week into the second coming into the millennium so this during that time commandments are going to be extremely important and according to this in the NIV there there's don't you know understand folks the people that are reading the NIVs out there most of them are going to be going through the tribulation period okay and they're going to be reading this corrupted version Bible and they're going to be missing a major part of it about blessed are they that do his commandments they're not even going to see that. Instead, they're going to be home washing their robes. You know, as ridiculous as it sounds. In Galatians 5.12, I would they were even cut off which trouble you. NIV, as for those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. Where in the world did they come up with that? The King James, Paul says that the legalistic troublemakers should be cut off. This is an easy phrase for any non-scholar to understand. It doesn't take a genius to figure this out. It means that they should be disassociated or separated from believers until they change their minds. The unbelievers. The, new, the, the newer version has Paul cursing the legalists and wishing they would cut off their genitals. I mean, is this even Christ-like in any sense of the word? Mark 9, 29, And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. In the perverted version, he replied, This kind can come, only, come out only by prayer. So what about fasting? What happened to fasting? Again, trying to hide something. Probably 
the most important part of it, right? Jesus said without fasting, nothing could be done. He's giving them the second, the second part of the secret equation. Prayer and fasting must be done. Again, we're looking at the book of Mark, written for the nation of Israel. This has nothing to do with the body of Christ today, but it's going to have something to do with Daniel's 70th week. Okay, Matthew 6, 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. NIV. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. The NIV has a strange aversion to God's kingdom, I'd say. In Luke 11, 2, And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so on earth. NIV, he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. So the NIV also has a strange aversion to the word heaven. Huh. Notice how the, the references to heaven have been removed in the following verses. Hebrews 10.34, the King James, Knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. NIV, because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. Does that even mean even remotely anything close to what the King James Version said? I mean, not even close, right? It's interesting they leave heaven out of it. Revelation 16, 17. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven. NIV. And out of the temple came a loud voice. So, what temple? In the NIV, what temple are they talking about? Are they talking about the temple in Jerusalem? Are they talking about a temple out in Egypt? What are they talking about? You see, the, the King James tells you it's a temple of heaven. Out of the temple of heaven came a voice, a great voice. In 1 John 5, 7, 8, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. In the NIV, For there are three that testify, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are in agreement. The modern versions and text, it's, they have a heyday with this verse. Okay, The criticism on this is outstanding. The NIV, NIV says this verse is not found in any Greek manuscript before the 16th century yet. This verse is found in the Old Syriac, the AD 170, Old Latin AD 200, the Vulgate, 4th and 5th century, Italian, 4th and 5th century, and also many church fathers quoted this, and it is found in the Liber Apologetic, 350 AD, the Council of Carthage in 415 AD. So let's look, look at the verse again. 1 John 5, 7, 8. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Look at the NIV. For there are three that testify the spirit the water and the blood what happened to the father the word and the holy ghost again trying to destroy the trinity mormonism jehovah's witness and the rest in mark 10 24 children how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of god niv children how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. You can't have it both ways. It's either hard for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God, or it's hard for everyone to enter into the kingdom of God. In Luke 4.4, 4, And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. In NIV, Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. What about the Word of God? Revelation 2.15 
so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. NIV, likewise, you also have those who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Laetans. Now, nothing about God hating them here. Romans 8.1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. NIV, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What happened about who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit? Matthew 19.17, why callest thou me good? NIV, why do you ask me about what is good? You see how they twist it? The NIV makes it look like they were asking Jesus about what is good, but the King James, the right one, they're calling Jesus good. Okay? Completely different. Matthew twenty five thirteen Ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. NIV You do not know the day or hour. The day or hour of what? Of what? John 8, 9. And when they heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out. NIV. At this, those who heard began to go away. Huh. 1 Timothy 3, 16. My favorite verse. God was manifest in the flesh. NIV. He appeared in a body. In a body? What, what, what was he doing? Was he possessing somebody? Like the exorcist or something? I mean, what did he do? Take over someone, someone's body? No, God was manifest in the flesh. His own flesh. Colossians 1.14 In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. NIV In whom we have redemption. The forgiveness of sins. What about the blood? The most important part. The enemy removes it. Are you starting to see the picture, my friends? First Peter one twenty two. Ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. NIV. You have purified yourselves by obeying the truth. Purified yourselves. Hmm. Not your souls, but yourselves. Revelation twenty one twenty four. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. NIV, the nations will walk by its light. Nothing about the nations of them which are saved. Here is no contradiction. However, let's take a look at this Matthew 26, 29. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom Matthew 27 48 and straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink okay these are from the King James Version there's no discrepancy between Matthew 26 and 29 uh, Matthew 26 verse 29 Matthew chapter 27 verse 48 okay there's no contradiction but now let's look at the NIV in these two ver in these two different verses again Matthew 26 29 I tell you I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my father's kingdom Matthew 27 48 immediately one of them ran and got a sponge he filled it with wine vinegar put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink now clearly if Jesus took wine sour or otherwise and drank it on the cross we have a contradiction that would make Jesus out to be a liar the Greek word used for fruit of the vine at the Last Supper and the Greek word used for the wine vinegar Sour wine, in some English translations, is not the same Greek word. What Jesus tasted on the cross was water mixed with vinegar. It was a common drink among the Roman soldiers. 
this vinegar did not come from grapes. It, it, it could it could have come from figs or palms or grain extract, but Jesus didn't lie. Okay, and the Greek language bears this out. However, the great majority of English Bible translations, including the other popular versions, the NIV, the NASB, the New King James Version, and the Amplified versions, have Jesus contradicting himself in these verses. Now here we're going to look at entire passages of the King James Version Bible that the newer versions, the NIV, completely remove. Okay? Completely remove. They don't even add it in the Bible. Acts 8.37 And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That verse completely removed. Acts 8.37 teaches one must first believe before one can be baptized. Okay? And again, folks, keep your right division radar on. Okay? And understanding dispensations, we were talking about the nation of Israel here where repentance and baptism was necessary to usher in the earthly kingdom. All right? So again, it teaches one must first believe before being baptized. That was their program. In other words, this powerful profession of faith is no longer needed, according to the NIV, for one to be baptized. They don't have to believe in Jesus. Okay? According to the NIV, all they have to do is be baptized. They're misleading people into thinking that baptism itself leads to salvation. But the Bible, God, says no such thing. In 1 John 5.13, And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God is removed. The NIV doesn't want anyone to believe in Jesus Christ. They're removing His name. And they remove the blood. And... They removed heaven and the kingdom. All the important things to understand. No wonder people cannot understand right division. No wonder why people, even in the body of Christ, have no idea what dispensations are or even mean. No wonder they think the whole book of Acts is for us today. No wonder they get caught up reading the four gospels and trying to follow the red letters to the to a T thinking that's the way to salvation no wonder and there's a good chance the reason why they're so confused is number one they're using everything other than the King James Bible Mark 11 26 but if ye do not forgive neither will your father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses completely removed nobody will receive forgiveness from God if they don't forgive others why does the NIV hide this fact again we're talking about the gospel of the nation of Israel okay Matthew 18 11 for the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost completely removed not even added in the NIV now understand going back you know when when we when I looked at uh, Mark eleven twenty six, it says but if ye do not forgive neither will your father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses okay we know Mark the gospel was all about the nation of Israel all about the gospel of the coming kingdom okay has nothing to do with the body of Christ all right we don't need to forgive others in order to be saved that's not our gospel so but they remove this they don't add it in the NIV okay so what does that mean well we know that once the church is removed the body of Christ is removed in the rapture God's going back to the gospel of the kingdom and everything you see in the book of Mark, uh, all the four Gospels, all the latter books, including Revelation, uh, you know, Peter, John, James, Jude, all those 
are going to apply during the seven year tribulation period. People will have to know these things. But how are they going to know if they're reading the NIV or the other version? You know what I mean? Mark 15, 28. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. That, that, that's completely removed. Acts 23, 9. Let us not fight against God. Removed. Romans 13, 9. Thou shall not bear false witness. Removed. Luke 17 36 two men shall be in the field the one shall be taken and the other left completely removed and this has to do with the second coming at the second coming God's gonna send his angels two men will be in the field one will be taken the one taken is the same as it was back in Noah's day the same as in Noah's day okay one that's taken is the one that was taken away to death the one that was kept is the same as the ones that were kept in the ark that were saved so at the end of the tribulation period at the end of Daniel's 70th week at when Jesus says as in the days of Noah so shall it be in those days he's saying the order of events is going to be the same as it was back in Noah's days okay two will be in the field one will be taken away to death and destruction and the one left will be left to go into the earthly kingdom to repopulate the earth, get married, and so on. It's the complete opposite than the rapture is. The rapture, when we get caught up, okay, when Jesus calls us, it's the opposite. The one taken is taken into heaven. Okay, we're removed before the tribulation period. And the ones left on earth are the ones who don't believe, are not saved, are not in the body of Christ, and they're the ones that are going to be going through Daniel's 70th week. Okay? The rapture is completely opposite than the second coming events in the order of things. In Luke 4, 8, Get thee behind me, Satan. Famous verse, completely removed. 1 Timothy 6, 5, From such withdraw thyself, completely removed. Matthew 17, 21. How be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Completely removed. Jesus said prayer and fasting are important for fortifying faith. And the NIV obviously doesn't agree with Jesus. So they just delete his teaching. Matthew 23, 14. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make a long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Completely removed. Mark 7, 16. And if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Again, removed. Mark 9, 44. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. It's talking about hell completely removed again mark 9 46 where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched talking about hell let's not talk about hell and in, in the NIV right let's not let's not tell the people what's waiting for them if they don't get saved right we don't want them to know that no let's just think they're gonna evolve they're going to reincarnate and come back to the earth as, you know, a plant. If they're not good. Ridiculous. Luke 23, 17. For of necessity, in, in the brackets, for of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. That is removed. John 5, 4. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Completely removed. Acts 15.34 Notwithstanding it, please Silas to abide there still. Removed. Acts 24.7 But if, but the chief captain Lysias came upon us, and with great violence took him away out of our hands. Removed. Acts 28, 29. 
And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. Removed. Romans 16, 24. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Removed. Why would they remove that? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Why? Was that too hard to understand? Or something? I, I, why? Why? Why not? Why didn't they put that in the NIV? I don't get it. Matthew 12, 47. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. It's removed from the footnotes at the bottom. Matthew 21, 44. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Removed from the footnotes. Mark 16, 9, 20. All 12 verses here, okay? Now, when Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive, this is about his, and had been seen of her, his resurrection, folks, believed not after that he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country and they went and told it unto the the residue neither believed that they them afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen don't you think it's important apparently the NIV folks don't and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved again the gospel to the nation of Israel about the earthly kingdom but he that believeth not shall be damned and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak in new tongues they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so then after the Lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God and they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Removed from the footnotes. There's a line separating the last 12 verses of Mark from the main text. Right under the line it says the two most reliable early manuscripts do not have Mark 16, 9 through 20. And that is in the NIV 1978 edition. Luke 22, 43 to 44. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground, removed in the footnotes. John 7, 53 and 8, 11. All twelve verses, and every man went unto his own house. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her into the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up his head and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one 
by one beginning at the eldest even unto the last and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman he said unto her woman where are those thine accusers hath no man condemned thee she said no man Lord and Jesus said unto her neither do I condemn thee go and sin no more removed from the footnotes now the following are corruptions in the Old Testament in the modern Bibles not only the NIV in Isaiah 14 12 how art thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations Isaiah 14 12 how you have fallen from heaven O morning star son of the dawn you have been cast down to the earth you who once laid low the nations if we look in the NIV we'll never know anything about Lucifer because they remove his name it doesn't appear the NIV changes Lucifer into the morning star which is Jesus but this is one morning star is a blessed title given to our Lord Jesus Christ and the NIV, NIV calls Lucifer the morning star okay if that's not enough folks I don't know what else I, I mean if your NIV is calling Jesus Christ Lucifer and you're still using it or if there's any preachers out there using the NIV saying there's nothing wrong with it but the same NIV is calling our Lord Jesus Christ Re Lucifer Second Peter 119 and we have the word of the prophets made more certain and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts in defining just who this morning star is we need to look at several references in both the NIV and the, in the King James in Revelation 228 and I will give him the morning star in IV I will also give him the morning star Revelation 22 16 I Jesus have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches I am the root and the offering of David and the bright and morning star in IV I Jesus have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star so both the NIV and the King James identify the morning star as being Jesus if a person is to accept the NIV as the Word of God then they must also accept that Jesus who was cast down from heaven to the earth in the event described in Isaiah 14 12 is none other than Lucifer as well Hosea 11 12 but Judah yet ruleth with God and is faithful with the Saints NIV and Judah is unruly against God even against the faithful Holy One Daniel 3 25 he answered and said lo I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God NIV he said look I see four men walking around in the fire unbound and unharmed and the fourth looks like the son of the gods G-O-D-S is Jesus the son of many gods Saints I could go on and on in this video for hours and hours showing you just how corrupt the new versions are but you know for today I've shown you the most popular of the new versions the NIV according to the statistics out there the NIV is the most used Bible version in the world that means the most people out there are reading and believing the NIV which call, which calls Jesus Lucifer the corrupted version they're me they're messing with God's words and they these people are believing lies no wonder why there's so much confusion out there friends 
I hope this video has opened your eyes. I pray that this video will shock you enough, just enough, so you can, you know, you now see that NIV and the ASVB and all the other ones out there are, are absolutely corrupted and perverted for a reason. Okay, and we've just shined God's light on this. Learn to use the King James Version and stick to it. Read it, learn it, bury it in your heart. You know, soon the King James Version, in my opinion, will be illegal to own. And if you're laughing, it, it, it's already illegal to own in many parts of the world right now. Don't think it's not coming because it is. It's not going to be found online and it's suddenly going to vanish. And if you listen to the video that I recommended earlier, you'll know why they get rid of the King James Version. And it's happening little by little right now. Slowly, they're removing God's true words. Then they'll give you Satan's words instead. Okay, which are you going to believe? Again, the video link is in the description box. And you're going to have to click on show more. All right, then look through and you're going to see a link in the video called the New Order of Barbarians. And go straight to minute mark 42. 42 minutes into the video. And listen to what he says about the Bible and their plans for Christians. What would you do if the King James Version Bibles suddenly vanished off the face of the earth? Would you know the truth? Would you know God's Word? Or would you be easily fooled into believing the lies? It's coming, folks. It's coming faster and sooner than you think. Thanks for studying with me, saints. Love, peace, grace, and Christ Jesus be with all of you. And I shall see you at our gathering or on the next video.